Okay, it's 5.30, we'll go ahead and begin. We'll call the meeting to order. Welcome, thank you for joining us. This is the Marion City Council meeting for Thursday, September 9th, 2021. Uh, we are virtual this evening and appreciate everyone's uh, patience uh, with, this, uh, with this process. Sometimes it's uh, imperfect, but uh, it's what we have to be doing right now. Um, for um, members of the public who wish to address the council at this meeting, um, there is a, a comments uh, section or uh, where, where there are comment sections or during public, uh, uh, public hearings, um, you can select a Q&A and enter your name and address and the item you'd like to comment on, the city clerk will, um, uh, allow you to uh, join the meeting and to be able to address the council at that time. Um, please uh, join uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. May we have the roll call, please? Mr. Harper? Here. Mr. Jensen? Here. Ms. Adkins? Here. Mayor Abu Asli? Here. Mr. Brandt? Here. Ms. Gadelia? Here. Mr. Sterned? Okay. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we have a moment of silence. Okay, thank you. First on our agenda, we have two proclamations. The first proclamation is for the 15th annual Five Seasons Stand Down Day, which is September 10th, 2021. And uh, do we have anyone here, uh, anyone joining this meeting uh, for this proclamation? Uh, I believe that Mr. Suttler had planned to join us. Are you with us, Joe? I don't see him on the call or on the meeting. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and read the proclamation and city clerk will deliver the proclamation to Mr. Stetler. Uh, whereas Valor Inc. in partnership with the Cedar Rapids Metro Area Veterans Council, the Iowa City VA Medical Center and the Lynn County Continuum of Care will hold Lynn County's 15th annual stand down for homeless and near homeless veterans and non-veterans. And whereas stand down is a term used in times of war in which exhausted combat units come off the battlefield to rest and recover in a place of safety. And whereas according to the US Department of Veteran Affairs, the first stand down was organized in 1988 by a group of Vietnam veterans in San Diego. And whereas today stand down also refers to a community-based program that assists homeless and near homeless veterans to transition to community living by providing access to human service agencies, including benefits, counseling, social security, <clears throat> and veterans counseling, employment and training assistance, eye exam screenings, healthcare screenings, house, housing services, legal assistance, mental health treatment, and substance abuse counseling. And whereas stand down have been used as an effective tool in reaching out to homeless veterans nationally, reaching more than 200,000 veterans and their family members. Now, therefore, I, Nicholas Abu Asili, Mayor of the City of Marion, Iowa, do hereby proclaim September 10th, 2021, as the 15th annual Five Seasons Stand Down Day, and encourage residents to recognize the positive impacts of this event to assist veterans and to express gratitude to those who have served and continue to serve. 
Mayor, we do have Scott Phones with the Valor Board here to accept that proclamation. Oh, okay. Uh, Scott, welcome. Would you like to uh, say anything? I just wanted to say thank you very much to you, Mayor Abu Asli, and the Marion City Council on behalf of the Valor Board and the Stand Down. We appreciate your recognition and we appreciate all the support for veterans that you offer every single day. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And uh, our, the city clerk will, uh, she has the signed official proclamation and she'll forward that on to you, okay? Thank you very much. All right. Okay, our second proclamation this evening is for National Hispanic Heritage Month, which is September 15th through October 15th of each year and including this year. Whereas National Hispanic Heritage Month is an official national celebration of Hispanic and Latino heritage in America. Whereas National His Hispanic Heritage Month, of, Month is an opportunity to celebrate the rich cultural traditions and honor the positive achievements of the Hispanic and Latino American community, community in our nation, state and city. Whereas Hispanics and Latinos are the largest ethnic minority group in the United States and contribute to our nation in important ways, including in business, industry, government, agriculture, education, the sciences, the arts, the armed forces, and community service. And whereas Marian residents of Hispanic and Latino ancestry are part of a rich and diverse cultural fabric in our city and share the same dreams, values, common goals, and love of community with all other residents. And whereas Marian residents of Hispanic and Latino ancestry are contributing to shaping a bright future for our city and helping to make it the best place to live, raise a family and grow a business. Now, therefore, I, Nicholas Abu Asili, mayor of the city of Marion, Iowa, do hereby proclaim September 15th through October 15th, 2021 as National Hispanic Heritage Month in the city of Marion and encourage all residents to embrace and celebrate diversity in our community, including the Hispanic and Latino heritage and the many positive achievements and contributions of Hispanics and Latinos to our city, state and nation. And uh, I believe we have uh, Brett Nillis from the uh, Marion Civil Rights Commission with us. Is Brett here, uh, Rachel? I don't see him on this uh, meeting. Um, okay. Uh, well, uh, we can uh, deliver this proclamation to um, uh, the Civil Rights Commission. And uh, if he does join us, uh, we can always take a break and have him address the council. Okay. All right, so uh, moving on with uh, the remainder of our agenda. The first item is a public forum, which is a section that is set aside for comments from the public on topics that are listed on the agenda, but not associated with the public hearing. If any members of the public have a comment regarding items that are associated with the public hearing, there'll be special time to um, address the council during those sections. So at this time, do we have anyone who has asked to address the council on any item that's on the agenda, but not part of a public hearing? I'm not seeing anybody um, to, wishing to speak during this section. Okay. If anyone does ask to speak, please, uh, please let me know. We'll move on with the consent agenda. Uh, has has uh, Mr. Sternad joined us? No? Okay. Steve, Mayor, I'd be happy to read Randy's items. Please go ahead. Mayor, uh, I move to approve the consent agenda, including items A1 through G1 and resolutions 29846 through 29887. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented, including items A1 through G1 with resolutions 29846 through 29887. Any discussion? Okay, I don't see any hands raised. So assuming there are no, um, there's no discussion, we'll vote. All those in favor of the consent agenda as presented, please say aye. 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 
All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion is approved. Yes, for, your the next, Honor. for the next section, uh, I will turn over the, uh, the meeting to the Mayor Pro Tem. Oh, I, yeah, Mayor Pro Tem, go ahead, Colette. Okay, Councilman Harper. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve items E1 through F1, resolutions 29888 through 29896. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda with Mayor Abouasli's extension. Items E1 through F1, resolutions 29888 through 29896. Discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes with one abstention. Okay, and will you handle the next item also? You bet. Okay, it looks like we've got a public hearing on a development agreement with Medco Holding Company, LLC, authorizing annual appropriation tax <laughs> increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. Do we have somebody here to give a little bit of information on that? Is that you, Amal? Yes, it's me, Your Honor. So uh, the city uses uh, tax increment financing to support economic development efforts. Uh, this hearing is for an agreement with Medco Holding Company uh, to complete an infrastructure project um, setting up the Marion Enterprise Center uh, to invite additional commercial development. Uh, action is consistent with our economic development policy and with our TIF strategy. Uh, approval of this agreement will uh, authorize um, making the city making eight payments, uh, eight semi-annual payments, uh, not to exceed 600,000 and subject to uh, annual appropriations. Okay, thank you, Amal. Do we have anybody with us, Rachel, that would like to speak uh, regarding this uh, public hearing? I have not received any comments and I'm not seeing anybody uh, wishing to speak right now. Okay. Amal, have we heard any, but anything from anybody um, through your channels? I have not, Your Honor. Okay. With that, we'll close the public hearing and um, pass it over to uh, Councilman Jensen. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 29897, approving development agreement with Medco Holding Company, LLC, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to payment of the agreement. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 29897, approving development agreement with Medco Holding Company, LLC, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion's approved with one abstention. I'll pass the meeting back to the mayor. Thank you. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 29898, approving fiscal year 2021 to 2022, operating budget transfer. Second. I moved and seconded to approve resolution number 29898, approving fiscal year 2021 through 2022, operating budget transfer. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. This time we have a public comment period uh, regarding no parking on um, REC Drive. Um, so we just opened the public comment period. Um, do we need, 
did we need an explanation of this, uh, Rachel or Kara, for the public? You can. So is that Mike? Yes. Yep. Um, so this is a request that actually came from Glenn County REC um, to request one side, no parking. Uh, the north side, TAC did look at it, and that is the recommendation coming out of TAC is to add no parking to the north side of REC Drive um, from 13 um, to the west, and this would include the area that eventually will get built um, north of Involta. Um, there's a TAC report in the packet, and it has gone out to the adjacent property owners. Okay, so the public comment period is now open, have we received any comments or, or has anyone asked to address the council? I received two comments in advance of the meeting and they, those have been emailed to council. Um, first one's from Robert Berger with Aids Enough. Um, he had some additional suggestions for parking in that area. And then another comment received by Jim Wright with the Money Light LLC um, with also some suggestions for parking in the area. And I don't see anybody on the Zoom call uh, wishing to speak. Okay. So this is going to get referred to the Traffic Advisory Committee for um, consideration and a recommendation. Is that correct, Mike? No. So this is the recommendation coming back to City Council. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, because we have the item here. Okay. Um, okay. So we'll have to close the public comment period then. If there's no comments from the public, we'll move on to um, item E2. Okay, um, Your Honor, I move to receive and file the TAC report regarding a no parking request. This is Lynn County Rural Electric Cooperative at 5695 REC Drive. Second. Okay. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to receive and file the Traffic Advisory Committee report regarding no parking request. Discussion. Mayor? Yes, go ahead. Uh, question for Mike. Uh, I think about you know, the one comment that we received was, should the no parking be on the north side of the street or the south side of the street? <clears throat> and did TAC consider no parking on the south side of the street, because if REC's asking for this, all their trucks and driveways are gonna be on the south side. So is there a difference between the north and the south side, no parking? Yeah, so as detailed in the TAC report, there's two driveways on the north side, and you can see it in this image, there's three on the south side. Eventually there will be an additional access point once that development finishes on the north. So it'll be the same number of driveways on the north and south. Okay. The fire hydrants are also on the north side, so we're trying to make the most parking available out there. Technically, if this street was built today, there'd be no parking on either side. And that may happen in the future. Very well could be. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, so this is the motion to receive and file. All those in favor? of receiving and filing the TAC report, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 29899, approving the establishment of a no parking zone on the north side of REC Drive from Highway 13, 1000 foot westerly. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 29899, approving the establishment of a no parking zone on the north side of REC Drive from Highway 13 to 1,000 feet westerly of that location. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of Approving resolution number 29899. Please say aye. 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 
All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion is approved. This time we have another public comment period for uh, regarding pedestrian access to Toby Park. Quick recap, Mike. Yeah, so this is a petition that we got regarding uh, the fact that there's no sidewalk on the west side of 31st along Toby Park. Um, the recommendations from the petition were to install a sidewalk on the west side to add a crosswalk with a lighted beacon and additional signage. Um, TAC came back with the recommendation of two sidewalk projects. One would be a, a shorter sidewalk that would be along Toby Park there, and then a longer project to connect all of the, the gaps along the west side of 31st. So this would just be creating project sheets that then would go into the CIP to get ranked against all the other needs and wants of the city um, to eventually be prioritized. Okay. So at this time we have uh, the opportunity for public comment on this measure. I know we've received several email communications um, which have been shared with the council. Rachel, do you wanna recap those? Yes, um, first one is from Jack and Barbara Mulligan um, at 2250 31st Street. Um, they offered additional suggestions for that area. Next comment is from Michael and Ruth Wagner at 3098 23rd Avenue. They spoke against the measure. Um, Brenda Kelly at 2277 31st Street offered additional suggestions for the area. And then um, Andrea Ertz at 3090 McGowan Boulevard um, shared concerns with the potential cost of the project. And I don't see anybody on the Zoom call wishing to speak. Okay. We'll just wait a few seconds here. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, proceed with the motion. Hey, Your Honor, I move to receive and file the TAC report regarding a request to look at the pedestrian access to Tobby Park. This was initiated by June Reeves, 2019, 31st Street. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to receive and file the TAC report regarding a request to look at the pedestrian access to Toby Park. Discussion. This is regarding receiving and filing the report. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mike, could you uh, inform us again, remind us what the financial impact would be on the homeowners if we added sidewalk on the west side of 31st Street? So depending on how we move forward with the sidewalk assessment, um, if we do an assessment, we charge half the cost of the actual sidewalk. The rest of the improvements, such as grading, storm sewer, seating, inspection, administration, all that is borne by the city. Typically, if you look at the total project cost of the actual dollars expended by the city, the homeowners generally pay about 20% of the total project. There has been discussions of going away from the assessment, and in that case, there would be no construction costs on the homeowners, it would only be the maintenance. With the smaller project, the portion along Tabby Park, that would be 100% the city. So it'd only be the property south of the park and north of the park that actually would have some assessment if that route was taken. So given your, your our, our history of assessments for a normal sized lot, what might that financial impact be on the homeowner? A swag, so looking for a swag. Sure. So because they're side yards, they're a little deeper, um, you know, it could get into the thousand dollar range. And with that, then there's also financing options. So if it's above $500, uh, it can go on their taxes over 10 years. Um, it is at a higher interest rate of 9% um, or they could pay it all when it's due. But we would do a preliminary assessment calendar that would be issued to them before the project even started. They would have an opportunity to voice their opinion on that. 
right. and when the project is done, we would have a final assessment that is based on the actual bid numbers, but there's also state requirements that it can't be higher than what the preliminary assessment was. So say we, we think it's only going to cost $10 a foot and it ends up costing $15 a foot because of inflation or something, we can only charge them the $10 a foot. So if, if, this, if this group had not put this petition together, is there any reason that the city would have considered putting the sidewalk in on the west side of 31st Street? So back when we had uh, the sidewalk assessment committee that met, I don't know that this was on their radar necessarily yeah. um, because there is at least a sidewalk on the east side of 31st. Um, I don't know what would have happened. We haven't had the sidewalk assessment committee for a few years now. Um, Councilman Brandt would have been on that as the council representative, but um, any of those projects could have been brought forward from that committee to city council. So it could have been, you know, instead of coming to city council right now, it could have been to the sidewalk assessment committee and they could have made it a priority. Thank you. Any other? Uh, yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah, Mike, just continuing along with uh, that inquiry about any potential cost to the homeowner, um, that would only be decided at such point it becomes actionable on the CIP. Correct. At this point, we're just putting it into the queue, assuming it's approved to move forward with the action of the TAC recommendation. So it could be something that's done next year, or it could be 20 plus years until it actually gets installed. So it's just putting it in the hopper to be evaluated with the criteria that we have for the CIP projects. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Again, we're voting on whether to receive and file the Traffic Advisory Committee report. Any further discussion? All right, we'll vote all those in favor of the motion to receive and file the report, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Your Honor, I move to direct staff to submit a project regarding installation of a sidewalk along the west side of 31st Street from 8th to 25th <laughs> Avenue, and McGowan Boulevard to 23rd Avenue to the Capital Improvements Program. Second. It has been moved and seconded to direct staff to submit a project regarding installation of sidewalk along west side of 31st Street from 8th to 25th Avenues and McGowan Boulevard to 23rd Avenue to the Capital Improvement Program. Um, again, this would just place it among the projects that are desired by the city and it would need to be given priority for funding at some point uh, in the future before it actually becomes an actual project. So uh, any discussion on the motion made by Mayor Pro Tem Atkins? Okay, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. We have another, we have another uh, public comment period uh, at this time regarding the study of the intersection of Linair Avenue and Highway 151. Recap, Mr. Barclow. Yes, Your Honor. So this is uh, an improvement to actually add. Right now, there's a gravel shoulder for northbound to eastbound traffic. And some of those semis do have off tracking um, if they don't get slowed down enough. And so this is a request to actually add a turn lane to that scenario. And with that, the eastbound traffic signals there would have to be moved farther to the east so that it's outside of the clear zone. And then a additional signal head would have to be added to the northbound to add that um, bulb for that traffic. Um, so again, similar to the action we just had, we are recommending that we create a project sheet that goes into the CIP for ranking. And then when it is prioritized as a top project to get that funding, then it would proceed. Um, this is joint jurisdiction with the DOT, so we would have to get their approval um, but the first thing is to get the money to actually build it. Okay, thank you, Mike. Do we have uh, 
Any members of the public who have asked to address the council on this measure? I know we received communication outside of the meeting. Um, Rachel, you want to recap? Yes, we received one email in advance of the meeting from uh, Mark Weems with Legacy Manufacturing. He spoke in support of the measure. And then we have Nick Glue with Medco on the Zoom call who wishes to speak. Okay, Mr. Glue. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and City Council. Um, first, I want to thank staff for spending some time uh, evaluating the situation from us. Uh, that, that I guess ultimately came from us. I think Councilman uh, Draper uh, pointed out well um, on Tuesday night that um, the letter that we submitted really comes on behalf of about 20 different property uh, owners and business owners who really access the industrial area, uh, this being one of the primary access points. Um, this issue was identified through our regular uh, business retention visits uh, that we do as the economic development organization and identified as kind of a common issue that independently um, these business owners uh, brought up over the course of the past, not just year, but several years. Um, I've had very high level conversations um, with Mr. Barkalow about uh, this particular intersection over the last couple of years. And this year, we just decided to kind of formalize uh, this particular uh, issue and ultimate request uh, to look at this intersection. I think uh, with, with the recommendation that this be placed in the CIP uh, for kind of continuous evaluation moving forward, my only request in this would be to, to figure out how we can regularly evaluate what I believe is, is a evolving situation. And by evolving, I, I think I mean that in a good way from a development perspective. Um, we continue to have growth uh, out in this particular area. Um, that growth brings more truck traffic that's going not just to businesses and some of our warehouse operations back there, but uh, I believe as we continue to um, you know, have, have users like Quickstar, uh, obviously that was built as a truck stop, uh, eventually that truck traffic is going to continue to learn that they can use Linair Avenue to access some of those facilities as well. So as this project kind of gets in the queue of the CIP, again, my request is that somehow we figure out how we can regularly evaluate the increase in, in traffic. And I think in some ways that needs to go beyond just um, you know, evaluating that site visually uh, a couple of times a year or a couple of times during the day. We're happy to support that however we can, uh, but again, um, this is one of those growing pains, positive growing pain type issues, and we appreciate kind of regular attention to this as we move forward. Okay, thank you. Anyone else who was asked to address council, Ms. Bolander? I have not received any other comments. Okay, then we will uh, proceed to the motion. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file a TAC report regarding a study, Lynn Air Avenue and Highway 151 in this game connector. Second. It has been moved and seconded to receive and file the TAC report regarding a study of Lynn Air Avenue and Highway 151. Any discussion? Your Honor, I did want to mention that Council Member Sternett is now on the at the meeting. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Council Member. Um, any discussion on on the motion made by uh, Mr. Jensen? Okay. All those in favor of the motion to receive and file the report, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. May I make a motion directing staff to submit a turn lane and signal modifications project for the capital improvements pro program. Second. I moved and seconded to direct staff to submit a turn lane and signal modifications project uh, to the uh, capital improvements program for Lynn Air Avenue. Discussion? I think what uh, Mr. Glue said is very true. You know, it's a positive uh, uh, result of, 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 of uh, it's, a, it's an issue caused by growth. Um, so it's kind of one of the challenges of growth uh, that uh, 
we need to stay ahead of it and uh, accommodate it so it doesn't become uh, a negative uh, at, at for our city. Uh, so I think this would, this one is uh, very warranted. Any further discussion? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. I'd just Great. like to hi highlight uh, the comments that uh, Mr. Glue made relative to uh, the potential for increased truck traffic turning right onto Linear Avenue in order to ultimately access that Quick Star. Um, you know, the word's going to be out on the sneaker net pretty quick amongst truckers that regularly go through that intersection. If they make use of the Quick Star facility, I'm sure that that problem will uh, grow quite quickly. So as that goes on to the CIP, I think um, that ought to inform our prioritization of that for action sooner rather than later. Thank you. Other, other comments? Okay, we'll vote all those in favor of the motion to direct staff to submit a <coughs> lane and signal modifications project for this capital improvement program for Linear Avenue. Please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. We have another public comment period uh, at this time regarding a request for additional signage on Larrick Court. Mr. Barclow? Yes, Your Honor. So the original request was to add a child at play sign, a no outlet sign, and a dead end sign. Um, TAC did take a look at it. There were a few side swipes on the, the short section. Um, the recommendation from TAC is to add a no outlet. It's a W14-2 and not to install children at play signs. Okay. So the public comment period is now uh, open. Do we have anyone who's asked to address the council? I know we received written um, comments outside the meeting. We received one email in advance of the meeting. It's from Jeffrey Goldman at 110 Larrick Court. And that was, um, he offered suggestions for um, signage. And I have um, no one wishing to speak on the meeting tonight. Okay. And everyone has received and reviewed uh, Mr. Goldman's communication there. So uh, we can bring that up during the discussion on the motion. Uh, we'll move on uh, to, uh, to the motion to receive and file. Ms. Gidiela? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I move to receive, yeah, I move to receive and file the TAC report <laughs> regarding a request for additional signage on Larrick Court. And this is on behalf of Sarah Cooksley at 330 Larrick Court. Second. It's been, uh, Moved and seconded to receive and file the Traffic Advisory Committee report regarding the request for additional signage on Larry Court. Discussion on receiving and filing the report. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to receive and file, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Here, I move to direct staff to install a no outlet sign at the intersection of Larrick Road and Larrick Court. Second. Okay, uh, just my, uh, Council Member Sternad, just to let you know, uh, your voice was very, very faint. Uh, I could barely hear the motion, but I did, I did hear it. So it's been moved and seconded to direct staff to install a no outlet sign at the intersection of Larrick, Court, Larrick Road and Larrick Court. Discussion. Um, Mike, I just have a question. I was trying to understand the, in, in the, uh, is it Mr. Goldman's comments? He had, he was differentiating between the shape of the signs. What's the significance of that? Um, I believe he was more talking about the arrow and adding confusion to it. Um, from this intersection, you can actually see the cul de sac. Um, so again, I, I don't know that it's, it's a huge need to add this uh, sign, but that's a recommendation that at least it's giving them something. 
<clears throat> this is how we've installed all of them for all the roads that we've closed along 6th Avenue. We've just put the no outlet sign up and it's been working just fine. Okay. Okay, any discussion on the motion made by Council Member Sternad? Your Honor. Yes, go ahead. Ju okay. Just a comment uh, on that notion of a no outlet sign being installed. I would have to say at the terminal end of Indian Creek Road, uh, north of Oak Savannah Court, and how infrequently some people in, uh, read that no outlet sign, um, I, I would certainly be in favor of uh, doing making that as a recommendation in accord with uh, responding to all of this. Other comments, observations? Okay, all those in favor of the motion directing staff to install a no outlet sign at the intersection of Larrick Road and Larrick Court, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. At this time, we have another public comment period regarding the intersection of South 12th Street and F Avenue. I know we've received several uh, comments outside of the meeting on this. Uh, we'll go ahead, uh, Mike, a quick recap. Yep, so this is uh, an existing four-way intersection East-West traffic has to yield, north-south traffic does not. Um, what they are asking for the change is take the yield signs down and install stop signs instead. There have been several accidents at this intersection where the incident was failure to yield. Um, and so with that, we are also recommending some increased uh, patrols from the police department to enforce the signs as well. Okay. Rachel, would you like to recap the um, comments I've received outside the meeting? Yes. Um, first one is from Carol Allen at 1320 F Avenue. She wrote in support of the measure. Steve and Marcy Van Note at 710 South 12th Street wrote in support. Larry and Judy Westergren at 1240 F Avenue um, shared concerns with the inter inter intersection. Jamie Busey at 1215 F Avenue wrote in support. Gary and Sandy Zaleski at 780 South 14th Street wrote in support. And Stacy College Skelton at 775 South 12th Street also wrote in support. Okay. And I don't see anybody on the Zoom call wishing to speak. Okay, thank you. And I'm assuming, um, Mike, that you don't have other communications from other people outside the meeting. All the all the communications we received, Rachel has received those and provided them to us. That's correct. Okay. All right. Your Honor, I move to receive and file the track TAC report regarding the request to install stop stop signs at the intersection of t South 12th Street and F Avenue. This is requested by Jamie. Bussy, 1215 F Avenue. Okay. Moved and seconded to receive and file a traffic advisory committee report regarding the request to install stop signs at the intersection of South 12th Street and F Avenue. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is approved. Your Honor, I move to approve resolution number 29900, approving a stop sign stopping eastbound traffic on F Avenue at South 12th Street and removal of existing yield sign. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve resolution number 29900, approving the stop sign stopping eastbound traffic on F Avenue at South 12th Street and removing the existing yield sign. Discussion? All those in favor of resolution number 29900, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved.
Mayor, I'd like to make a approve or I move to approve resolution number 29901, approving a stop sign stopping westbound traffic on F Avenue at South 12th Street and removal of the existing yield sign. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 29901, approving the stop, uh, stop sign stopping westbound traffic on F Avenue at South 12th Street and removing the existing yield sign. Discussion. All those in favor of resolution number 29901, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. May I make a motion to approve project calendar regarding the Third Avenue Reconstruction Project? NSI, and that's resolutions 29902 through 29904. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve the project calendar for the Third Avenue Reconstruction Project, including resolutions 29902 through 29904. Discussion. Mr. Barkle, you said that you've heard, I think I saw something from you where you said you've heard from some of the residents with concerns. Yeah, those are just general. What we like to do before we get the plans out is know if people have disabilities or issues uh, when we do the street so that we can accommodate them as much as possible. So those are, those are the only type of comments that we receive. Okay. Um, so I, I sent the city council the, the letter that we send out to the citizens so they know what's going on. Right. There'll be additional letters that go out, but just to kind of get everybody on the same page so that everybody knows what's going on. I know Mr. Harper did ask about the PCI value. Um, for this street, it is 29. Normally we would wait a year or two more until it's a little bit lower. However, in this case, the water department has a lot of water main that's failing and a portion of our project is actually expanded to include their water main. So as a partnership with them, uh, we do it as part of our project and then we send them a bill and they pay for that portion of the project. Rather than them going in and doing just a water main project and replacing half the street and then waiting a couple of years and replacing the other half of the street, um, we just partner up and get it done. So the PCI is obviously a large, number that we take into account, but there's also utilities and other things that come into play when we select our streets. So the water department's portion is included in that 1.55 million? It yep. It is, okay. Okay, any additional questions or discussion? All right, all those in favor of the motion to approve the project calendar for the Third Avenue Reconstruction Project, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is approved. Your Honor, I move to approve resolution number 29905, approving contract and bond with Rachi Construction Company regarding the Marion Aircom Park oh. Sanitary Sewer Extension Project in the amount of $298,974.20. Second. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn this over to the Mayor Pro Tem. Sorry been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 29905, approving contract and bond with Rachi Construction Company regarding the Marion Aircom Park Sanitary Sewer Extension Project in the amount of $298,974.20. Discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved with one abstention. I'll pass the uh, meeting back to the mayor. Thank you. Mayor, this is Randy. Can you hear me now? I can, thank you. Thank you, sorry about that earlier. I had an adjustment to make. So this will be the motion to approve ordinance number 21-21, approving an update to the official Marion zoning map for property located within Marion City Council Ward 4, which includes precincts 11, 12, 13 and 14. This will be final consideration. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the final consideration of ordinance number 21-21, approving an update to the official Marion zoning map for the 
all property located within the City of Marion Council Ward 4, which includes precincts 11 through 14. Discussion. And we had uh, several uh, tweaks or, or small changes uh, recently. Um, any discussion? All right, all those in favor of approving ordinance number 21-21, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. This time we have a public hearing regarding proposed demolition for property located uh, within the Terrace Park Historic District at the address of 985 11th Street. <clears throat> Per Chapter 29.05 of the Marion Code of Ordinances. Uh, who will give us a, is this uh, Mr. Trehard or who will give us, or, or I guess Mr. Hockett's with us, okay. Yep, I'll give a, a brief recap. Yep. I'll give a quick, uh, quick little uh, summary here. Uh, the applicants are seeking to uh, 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 take down a uh, detached garage on the rear of the property, highlighted there in the red on the screen. Uh, this is a garage that was built right in the 1930s, according to the Lane County Assessor. It was uh, damaged uh, in the August 2020 storm. Uh, the photographs from the staff report don't quite do it justice, uh, but it's been shifted off the foundation. Uh, the roof's in uh, pretty bad shape as well. Uh, the applicant was really had a tough time finding a contractor willing to take on the job just because they all felt it was, uh, it was really too far gone. Uh, so he'd like to remove the garage, and as part of the uh, being located within the uh, Terrace Park Historic District. It's got to go through the demolition review process. It went to the uh, Historic Preservation Commission meeting last month. Uh, they reviewed the request and determined that the garage could be, and recommended the garage be torn down, uh, subject to just uh, the owner working with uh, uh, folks that may want to reclaim some of it, some of the wood or some of the uh, other items from it uh, to repurpose on their own projects or upcycle it. Um, like I said, this is a contributing structure to the historic district, uh, really just because of its age. Um, it was on the, like I said, the, the period of significance of this district is from about 1870 to 1930. And again, the garage is being on the, being constructed on the tail end of the period of significance. Uh, there's nothing sig historically significant about the garage or structurally other than its age. Uh, again, the commission did recommend approval uh, for the demolition of the, of the uh, of the garage, the owner will be uh, replacing it with a new one. Uh, he did receive approval from the Zoning Board of Adjustment um, last month as well uh, for some reduced setbacks, uh, pretty similar to what has been approved or what exists uh, in that neighborhood already with a lot of the other garages. Uh, for Council Member Harper, I didn't update my memo, but the, uh, the uh, resolution does reflect the Historic Preservation Commission's action in the uh, in the actual approving resolution. Uh, so we did uh, we did document it that way rather than in the staff report. Uh, I believe the applicant is in the uh, is on the on Zoom if he has anything else to add. Okay, thank you, uh, Dave. At this time, we'll um, ask for comments from members of the public, either in favor or in opposition. And uh, uh, the applicant is welcome to uh, participate and speak at this time. I have not received any comments ahead of time. Um, and I guess if Jeff Lundsman wishes to speak, he can use the raise hand feature. Oh, uh, Terrell, if you can unmute him. Jeff, you should be able to speak now. All right, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, we can hear you. Welcome. All right. First of all, thank you for taking this under consideration. Uh, Dave did a really good job of explaining it. The garage shifted last August during the great show. I had a roofing contractor out there who would not even get up on the roof because he said it was unsafe. I basically just want to tear it down and build something that is safe. That way, if I'm in it, I don't have to worry about it falling down on me. Okay. Are there any uh, questions for Mr. Lundsman? 
Okay. Is there anyone else uh, who has asked to address the council on this? Ms. Bolander? I have not received any other comments. Okay. All right, then we will close the public hearing and move on to the resolution. Yes, Your Honor. I move to approve resolution number 29906, approving a demolition request for property located within the Terrace Park Historic District at 985 11th Street, Marion, Iowa, per chapter 29.05 of the Marion Code of Ordinances. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 29906, approving demolition request for, for property located within the Terrace Park Historic District at the address of 985 11th Street. <clears throat> Discussion. Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Great. Yeah, just a comment, Dave, I see that amendment you made uh, in the agenda memo and I appreciate that and thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving resolution number 29906, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion is approved. At this time, we have a public forum, which is a time set aside for uh, comments from members of the public on any topic. Do we have anyone who has asked to address the council? I have not received any comments. Okay. I'll just remind uh, members of the public also that uh, council members are available outside of meetings to help uh, address issues and to hear um, comments um, on any topic. So, okay. Then uh, this brings us to the conclusion of the meeting. We'll go with council comments. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Jensen. Yeah, the only comment I'll make uh, this evening is just that I believe our time by city council spent at Tobby Park is time very well spent. I'd have to say in the times this summer and fall that I've been there, we'd have no less than 20 to 30 people stop by every Saturday morning. And that far outweighs the numbers that we ever saw uh, with people stopping by or any questions or comments when we were at the library. So again, I would just, continue to say that I think that's time well spent by all the city council members that uh, mark that man the table there. That's all. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Atkins. I don't have anything tonight, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Harper. Yes, I just would uh, concur with uh, Mr. Jensen's comments about the, uh, about the farmer's market uh, experience. Uh, I've had many uh, people stop just to chat, get information about various projects, uh, bring a few concerns uh, to our attention. I think, uh, I think that's a great uh, interaction. So I just uh, really endorse those events. Thank you. Mr. Sternad. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to apologize to everybody for being tardy. I had a previous uh, meeting that uh, ran over and delayed me. So I apologize for that. Otherwise I have uh, no other comments. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Brandt. Nothing tonight. Okay, and Ms. Gadella. You're muted, Brene. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, yeah, I just want to remind everyone it's uh, a really important date coming up. Uh, one week from today is the closing of filing for running for public office. Um, school boards, local city councils, I just encourage people to pay attention. Elections are important. Um, and I hope that, you know, we have a really great turnout in terms of voting. I think this is the first time, if I'm not mistaken, that we are doing school board and city elections at the same time. So hopefully that will drive up turnout. 
and people will you know, pay attention, plug in, be informed. Um, so yeah, one more week till the filing date, then we get to find out who the slate of everybody is. And I just encourage people to take these next several weeks um, and a couple of months to look at issues, determine what you care about, and go meet people, um, come to the things that'll be organized where you can ask questions and hear people speak. Uh, this is really important and um, that's it, thanks. Thank you. Did I miss anyone? I think we got everyone. Okay, uh, for my part, uh, I, I would echo what's been said about the uh, council um, presence at the, uh, at the markets. Uh, when we started doing uh, office hours, um, well, it would be six years ago now, um, you know, it, it was for the purpose of uh, making council members uh, going where people are to make ourselves uh, accessible, to hear um, comments from people, to share information, and to um, uh, listen to people and be and be available to 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 meet them, to get to know them, and to uh, let them know that we're here to help them solve their issues and we're here to to serve them. And I think it, I agree, it has been very successful. Um, I, uh, I encourage all members of the public to use that and all other ways to reach council members, whether it's by email or a phone call or a personal meeting, um, and also showing up at these uh, uh, office hour sessions that we, that we um, uh, attend. Um, we'll have to figure out after the markets are done what, uh, what location we're going to use since uh, traditionally we've done them at the library on Saturdays uh outside of the uh, summer months so we'll i'm sure we'll figure out uh, a new location until the new library is uh, open and available um other than that um i have driven through the new roundabout at 10th and 10th a number of times i think it works uh beautifully i've heard a lot of great comments seen on social media uh, a lot of positive comments from residents um, uh, about how much they appreciate it and uh, are enjoying uh, driving through there. So kudos to everyone uh, involved in, in with that. And um, I think it's it's been received uh, well so far. So with that, that brings us to the end of the meeting. Appreciate everyone joining us and we'll see you next time. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Good night all. Good night. Night.